What's up, good people? Thank you for clicking play on another episode of Big Man Tiny Kingdom. Westside! Yes, yes, y'all. Even though I was born on the East Coast, the great city of Baltimore, what's up to all my Briscoe family? Hope everyone's doing well. I love and miss y'all. But despite Maryland being my birth state, I was raised on the West Coast. West Side! Northwest to be exact. Tacoma, Washington. What's up to my Vaughn family? What's up to my 717 click? What's up to the Hilltop? Love and miss all y'all. I ain't been back home in quite a while, so it's time to stop on through for a visit to see everyone. West Side! I moved to Arizona in 2008, and I enjoy being here. Main thing people always mention about Arizona is dealing with the heat. Well, I love it. I don't avoid it. I get out in it as much as I can. Yeah, it's hot, but it don't stop me from doing what I enjoy doing. And that's getting outdoors. Camping, taking road trips to different Arizona destinations. Not too long ago, I took an extended camping trip to visit some of the state parks on the western part of Arizona. And I particularly wanted to visit these parks because I was ready to be near a large body of water. I'm definitely a water person. I love being around lakes, rivers, and even the local swimming pools. My favorite body of water has to be the ocean. As I mentioned, I'm from Washington State, which borders the Pacific Ocean, and also from Maryland, which borders the Atlantic Ocean. Fun fact about me, despite being from two places which easily can be called seafood capitals of the U.S., I'm not a big seafood eater. Although I may not eat fish much, I absolutely love being around where fish live. And I don't necessarily have to get in the water with the fish. I definitely can swim. I'm just not that big on being cold. Once in a while, I will get on a water toy like a boat or a sea dew or something like that. But for me, it's more about being in the atmosphere. Only thing about being someone who loves the ocean and living in Arizona, we ain't got no ocean water. So you know what that means. Road Road trip! Yes, perfect excuse to hit the highway and head west. West San Diego is about a five to six hour drive, and that'll be the closest destination I can make to visit the Pacific Ocean. However, gas prices are still being a vampire right now, so I'm avoiding driving too far these days. Lucky for me, Arizona has the next best thing to the Pacific Ocean. We are fortunate to have the beautiful Colorado River flowing throughout our state. And add some cherries on top of that, sweet deal. We have several Arizona state parks encompassed along the Colorado. So what did I do? I made plans to visit five different parks. And damn it, I had a blast. I always have a great adventure anytime I'm somewhere outdoors. But you know those moments of life where you're like, yeah, I needed this. This was the road trip for me that sticks out like that. Each of these parks is wonderful enough to be their own episode. For now, though, I'm just going to mention them and highlight a thing or two I really liked about each one. First stop was the Alamo Lake State Park, located in Wyndon, Arizona. First thing that comes to mind when I think about Alamo Lake is that I've seen a lot of fishing pictures of people catching some enormous sized bass. I didn't fish on this trip, didn't plan to, but with what I know about Alamo Lake, And from what I saw in this visit, this is definitely a spot that I will visit again. And next time I'm bringing the fishing gear. Wasn't a lot of people there when I went. Not a big park at all, which is probably why I really like Alamo Lake. It's nice to be at a park where the traffic and the noise you hear is very minimal. Plus, the drive there is far away from city life, so it's very secluded. Just makes for a perfect getaway when you know you just want to chill out and not be around the campgrounds where you can most likely expect it to be more of a party scene type of park. Moving on to park number two, next stop was Buckskin Mountain State Park, which was about a two hour drive from Alamo Lake located in Parker, Arizona. And Parker is one of the places where there seems to be a lot going on when it comes to doing outdoor activities. I've been to Parker several times. This was the first time making it to Buckskin Mountain. Just like Alamo Lake, it's not a big site, and it actually connects to River Island State Park, which is just a few minutes apart from each other. I'm just going to combine both of them into one thought. 
Separately, they are unique enough and provide enough recreational differences to truly be their own entities. But I hiked a little and was able to get from one park to the other without much of a struggle. So the mini hike walk was something fun to do. What makes them different to me was that at Buskin Mountain, there was a pretty cool cactus garden to explore and also the beach that got you access to the Colorado River. Such a relaxing, fun for all ages way to hang out. At Buckskin, the campground seemed to me like they offered a little bit better option for camping than River Island did. Seemed like at Buckskin, there was more tent camping spots. River Island seemed to be more for the RVs with all the gravel paved spots, not as much trees and shade. What I noticed and really liked the idea of was that on the other side of the river, you could see all of the park model homes. And it gave me the thought that maybe I should look into what's available I would absolutely love the idea of having a house close to water. Last thing I wanted to mention is that if you visit either one of these parks, the entrance fee you pay gets you access to both parks, which makes it super easy and removes any excuses of driving a mile around or hiking across to the other. So after I got my fun in at Buckskin Mountain and River Island, it was time to hit the road again to the next destination. But once again, not too far of a drive. 15 minutes up the highway, I made it to Cattail Cove State Park, still in the city of Parker. And this park has two things that I really love. The first being the beach. This was the first Arizona park that I've been to where the beach area gave me that true California Pacific Coast vibe. And because of the landscape this park has, you can expect it to draw more of a crowd. But I think at the beach is where seeing a lot of people is a good thing. People out there swimming and on their inner tubes and jet skis and pontoons. And there's areas where people are fishing and you get to see people laying back, getting some sunbathing in, playing beach volleyball and throwing around a Frisbee. And there's always that one person roaming around with the metal detector. With all that stuff going on, being at a beach setting always makes for a perfect outdoor vibe. And the other thing about Cattail Cove that I love is it's one of the parks where you are most likely to get a glimpse of some desert bighorn sheep. Those are some cool looking creatures. I'm fascinated by bighorn sheep and most any wildlife. Seeing them in their element really makes me appreciate life in general, but also just the various levels of our ecosystem because it allows me to understand and be more in tune with each thing being a puzzle piece and what makes our world go round. Out of the four Western Arizona state parks I've mentioned so far, this one had the most traffic. It seemed like from one park to the next, the amount of people, the activities going on, the sizes of the parks, they all seem to go up, which takes me to my next and biggest destination of my Colorado River adventure. I got back on Highway 95, drove north about 25 minutes, to my final stop of this fantastic voyage, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, home to the original London Bridge, which was purchased and relocated from England between 1968 and 1971. Additionally, Lake Havasu City is where you'll find Lake Havasu State Park. In one of my episodes last year, I said that my favorite Arizona State Park was Lima Lake. Well, there's a new lady in my life, and it is absolutely Lake Havasu. It's the biggest park I've been to, the largest body of water in Arizona that I've been to, the most things to do for fun, the most people I've been around when camping, all the fun you can have on the water and all the things you can get into at the London Bridge and around the rest of Lake Havasu City. Like I always say, whatever you do, make sure you do it real big. And you can best believe when you visit Lake Havasu, you're going to be in for a supersized experience. While I was there, I reserved a cabin. I enjoy every minute of it, especially lounging back in my camping chair on the back porch of the cabin, which points in the direction of the water. What a beautiful view it was and such a relaxing time I had. First thing in the morning when the sun is coming up and then again at dusk when nature gives us for free one of the best picture shows you'll ever see. The orange, blue, purple color streaking throughout the clouds as the sun is going down and then it's dark. And the moon and stars come out and illuminate the nighttime sky. Imagine seeing all that wonderfulness while you're chilling outside. You got the campfire going. You got a cool breeze blowing in from the water, which is helping offset the warmer temperatures we get here in Arizona. 
I enjoyed my time doing that. Also got some hiking in. I got some sightseeing in. Went on a tour boat ride, spent the day at the London Bridge area. Busy place, lots of people in traffic, lots of boats on the water, but all around good time. It was a great week. I usually enjoy the shorter trips or the extended weekend getaways. But I must say, camping for a week or even longer, it's a really cool vibe. You don't have to rush your plans. I'm starting to really like having camping days where I can sleep in or be outside and take a long afternoon nap if I want to. Just do nothing but enjoy the moment. And the longer trips give me more time to do that. When I go somewhere for the weekend and it's a place that I've never been before, I feel like I'm obligated to explore the area and make sure I get my money's worth because who knows when the next time I'll get to revisit. So I usually jam pack as much as I can into those shorter trips. I got so many things planned for some weekend and extended camping. I'm getting closer to my goal of visiting every Arizona state and regional park, which I feel really good about. There are two state park locations that I didn't make it to on this Western Arizona adventure. I skipped going to Yuma to visit the two historic parks in that area. I'm going to save that for the cooler weather and time of the year since they are outdoor exhibits. I also figured during that trip, I'll cross the border and check out Mexico for the day. If you haven't been to the Colorado River, I promise you, if you make a trip, Whether you visit one or all of the cities and Arizona State Parks I visited, you'll really enjoy yourself. And you'll be doing exactly what I wish upon you all. You'll be doing life real big. Keep it kosher, good people. This is Big Man, Tiny Kingdom. Tiny Kingdom.